Hot on the heels of my home lab security guide, I decided to implement one more layer of security. Don't get me wrong, the architecture I outlined in that guide is pretty solid, but something caught my eye. Hmm, not sure, uh, mm, is it, uh, there? Yeah. After I launched that video, there was an all out DDoS attack on my site. But keep in mind, it was detected and blocked by Cloudflare. Now, I wasn't sure if I should be upset that people actually did it, or if I should thank them for the 1.25 million integration security test. Just kidding, just kidding, I don't want people to do that. But that aside, I started thinking about, well, what if someone got past that line of defense? What if someone acted human enough to where they couldn't get detected by Cloudflare? And that's when I decided to look for another layer of security with CrowdSec. Crowdsource is a participative intrusion prevention system. It's easy to set up and easy to use. It's replayable, meaning that you can process old logs and live logs. It's observable and already instrumented with Prometheus, meaning that you can get Grafana charts out of the box. It's API driven, which makes it highly extensible. It's participative, meaning that it shares IP data of bad actors with other users of CrowdSec to help outnumber hackers. It can also detect and block many types of behaviors like DDoS, drive-by downloads, brute force credentials, port scans, bot scraping, and much, much more. And it's also very flexible too. It can be installed on a virtual machine, on bare metal, in containers, and even Kubernetes. And it also works pretty seamlessly with familiar services like Apache, Nginx, HAProxy, SSH, Home Assistant, IIS, Linux, Windows, Proxmox, and even traffic. And last but not least, it's open source and free to use. So this might be another great addition and another layer of security if you're self-hosting at home in your home lab or in the cloud. And if you are still considering how to build out your home lab, you should definitely check out some hardware from our sponsor, Microcenter. If you're a huge nerd like me, one of the best places to shop for all your technology needs is Microcenter. Nothing beats walking into a store and feeling right at home and that's how I feel the minute I walk into a Micro Center store, each and every time. They have the best deals on gear for gamers, streamers, custom build PCs with performance and budget options, keyboard and accessories, desktops and laptops, and much, much more. Whether you're looking to build your own dream system, networking and storage, pre-built desktops or laptops, home security and home automation, DIY and tech hobbies, even printers and television, or just some help from any of their experts, they really do know what they're talking about, Micro Center should be your destination. Also, Micro Center has been generous enough to give a free SSD to all new customers and is available in store only. So see the link in the description. So be sure to visit your local Micro Center store today. And if you can't make it in, be sure to check them out on the web. Oh, and tell them Techno Tim sent you. They'll have no idea who you're talking about. I know you're gonna ask why this mic is here and I'm having troubles with my other microphone. So I had to switch to my streaming microphone. Anyways, that aside, CrowdSec is broken up into multiple parts, but at a really high level, it looks like this. First, you have a parser that parses logs from a machine or system, and it can acquire that data or that log from many different systems. Once it parses those logs, it will then analyze them. And after it analyzes them, it'll apply specific scenarios to them to detect cybersecurity threats. Once it's detected a threat, then you can automate security. And you can define how you wanna deal with that threat and where you want to deal with that threat. But a lot of them are defined already. And then that bad actor's IP is shared with the community. And then all the users of CrowdSec get to benefit from the crowdsourced and curated IP list. Now, I know you're concerned with privacy, as you should be, as am I. And in their FAQ, CrowdSec has detailed what types of data they capture and what types of data they retain. So if you're interested in that, you should definitely check it out. So going back to my original problem statement, I wanted to add another layer of security to my self-hosted services. And the problem I'm trying to solve is what happens if someone makes it past my Cloudflare reverse proxy and makes it all the way down to my reverse proxy. So the reverse proxy I use is traffic. If they can make it to that reverse proxy, they're most likely, kind of, mostly, maybe human, kinda. Over the last couple of days, I've been playing with it and checking it out and it's actually really awesome. So that's what we're gonna set up today. We're gonna take an existing installation of traffic. We're gonna add CrowdSec to it. We're then gonna force everyone who comes in to then be vetted against CrowdSec. And if they pass that test, they can get through to the web service. And if they fail that test, they'll get blocked. We'll then run a simple test to make sure that, hey, it is working and doing what we think it should be doing. And then we'll touch briefly on dashboards and alerting because there's a lot there and there's a lot that's not ready yet. So I'm just gonna throw this out there. If you're not using traffic, 
or any reverse proxy, this still might be a good intro video for you to learn how CrowdSec works, because you can apply a lot of these same principles to other ways of protecting with CrowdSec. And we'll talk about that towards the end too. So let's hop right in. So as I mentioned already, you should have traffic up and running. You wanna make sure you can get to that site through your reverse proxy. Now I have many instances of traffic running in my environment, but this is the one that I'm gonna protect. It's the one that's running some of my dashboards and some other services. Also, I'm running traffic in a container. I think most people who are running traffic are running in a container, but I should make that clear. And so you wanna remote into the machine that's running traffic. Once you're in there, you wanna CD into the directory where you wanna keep your CrowdSec configuration. You wanna make a directory for CrowdSec. Then you'll wanna make a directory for your config files. Next, we'll wanna create a Docker Compose file. That's docker-compose.yaml. And in here, we're gonna paste some contents, the contents of CrowdSec. So here are the contents of our Docker Compose file for CrowdSec. This might be pretty straightforward, but let's talk about what's going on in here. First, the version for Docker Compose is 3.8. Then we're creating a service stack. The service is called CrowdSec, and the image that we're going to use is CrowdSec security slash CrowdSec in latest. You should probably pin this to a specific version, like I usually say, but we're gonna use latest while we spin this up. We're gonna name our container name CrowdSec. Now this GID is the ID of our Docker process, and so when we use Docker Compose, it's basically gonna use our GID and pass it into this environment variable. That's a quick way of doing it instead of hard coding it to whatever your ID is. Now here's a depends on field. So this is saying depends on reverse proxy. So what does this mean? So if you're instantiating traffic or traffic is in the Docker Compose file with this CrowdSec, you'll wanna say that, hey, CrowdSec depends on traffic being up first. As you can see, I don't have traffic in this file, so I commented it out but I'll leave this here just in case you do. And so this would be the name of that container. So if your container name is traffic, you would say, hey, this service right here depends on traffic and don't start until that's up and running. Anyways, it's a comment, it's there if you need it. Next are volumes. So we have four volumes here. This gets a little bit tricky here. First, we're gonna buy mount to a file, this Aquis. I don't know how you pronounce that, but it stands for acquisition. So we're gonna bind to this acquisition file and mount it to the path within the container of Akis YAML acquisition. And we'll modify and create that here in a little bit. Next, we're gonna create some Docker volumes. So instead of bind mounting to a directory, we're actually gonna create a Docker volume and then mount that to this container. So we're gonna create a volume called CrowdSecDB and we're gonna mount it inside of the container to slash data. And we're gonna do the same thing for a CrowdSec config and we're gonna mount that to the containers slash etsy slash CrowdSec. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the traffic logs. We're gonna say traffic underscore traffic dash logs to var log traffic in read only. So what are these three volumes actually doing right here? Well, if we look in our compose at the bottom, we can see that we have these same volume names. So this is actually creating a Docker volume for DB, a Docker volume for CrowdSec config. And then this one's a little different. We're actually defining this traffic underscore traffic logs, and we're saying external is true. This might not make a ton of sense, but if you're running two separate stacks, you have traffic running from one compose, and you have CrowdSec running from another compose, this is the way that you link these volumes that are shared. This might make a little bit more sense in a little bit, but hear me out. Because traffic is running, and soon will have its logs mounted to a Docker volume, the only way that this container can then read that volume is by mounting it as well. And since they're not in the same stack, we just define it and say external is true. This name right here really is gonna depend on what you named your traffic stack. So you'll wanna update this depending on what your traffic container name is. We'll see this here in a second. So let's copy all of this and paste it into our compose file. And let's save this and close. Okay, so before we start that, we have to do one other thing. Remember that Akiz file, acquisition file? We need to create that real quick. Okay, after saving that, we'll run a ls and we'll see where we are. We're still in the root of this CrowdSec folder. So let's go into the config folder. And now let's create that Akiz or acquisition file. And then let's modify this acquisition file. In this acquisition file, we're telling CrowdSec how to find logs and how to label them. So it's real simple. I'm telling CrowdSec, hey, 
Our logs for traffic are in var log slash traffic, and then anything in there is a traffic log. And then you'll want to label them as traffic. Remember this path though, var log traffic, we're going to use that. So let's save this and close out. Now you might be thinking, okay, so how does CrowdSec know where to read my logs? And you might have this set up already for traffic. I didn't before doing this. I was just logging to memory and they were never ever being read. But we need to actually define where traffic logs are written. We need to mount them to that Docker volume we created so that CrowdSec can actually read them and parse them. Super simple. So first we have to tell traffic where it's gonna write our logs and at what level. And we can do this within the traffic YAML file. So if you have traffic installed, it's most likely in data. And then within your data folder, you'll see traffic.yaml. So at the very bottom of that file, we'll want to add some definition for our logs. It's pretty simple. I already have log set with the log level of info and then the path set to var log traffic traffic log. Now this is the actual traffic service, not the access logs. So you'll need to add another key called access log and then set the file path. And here you can see I'm setting it to var log traffic slash access log. So now we're telling that container with inside of the container, hey, this is where you're gonna write the access log. After you save that to your file, then we'll wanna update our Docker Compose for traffic. And for me, that's one level up. Then we're gonna edit Docker Compose. And in our Docker Compose file, we'll wanna modify two things, the volume to our logs. First, we'll need to mount the logs from traffic into a Docker volume. This is so CrowdSec can actually read this volume. And then lastly, we'll want to define that volume called traffic-logs. And real quick, I know this can be confusing. So I've documented the whole entire thing on my documentation site. And I've also created a repo with all of my files that you can just download and copy and paste if you like. But let's keep moving. So now that we have this volume mounted and then exposed, we need to restart this container. So I'm going to use docker-compose-up-d-force-recreate. I know you can use other things, but I'm using that just to make sure it works and it also works every time you use it. Okay, so I recreated that and you should check now to make sure your website still works. That was behind your reverse proxy. Checking mine, mine still works, I'm good. Okay, so now that we've done that and we've updated traffic, now we can actually start CrowdSec and have CrowdSec look at those log files. So let's go back into CrowdSec. And let's run the same command we just ran, docker-compose-up-d-force-recreate. And it's created. Let's make sure that it's running and it's okay. So let's run docker logs and crowdsec. All right, we see some logs here already. Awesome. Okay, so let's not pay attention to that really quick. Let's close out. And another way to check to make sure that crowdsec is running and can read the logs and has collections is by checking the metrics. So we can run this command right here, docker exec crowdsec cs cli metrics. And this should output some metrics. I think the most important piece here is to make sure that you see var logs here. And you can see it has access to my traffic logs and it's read 1215 lines already. And then to see decisions it has made or not made yet, we would run docker exec crowdsec cs cli decisions list and it lists no decisions. So that means it hasn't banned anyone yet, which is a good thing because I just spun this thing up. And a little bit of troubleshooting because I know that this part right here is pretty critical to move forward. But I do want to make sure that I can access my traffic logs from CrowdSec. So how do we do that? Let's actually exec into this CrowdSec pod and look at our logs just to make sure that they're there. Now we're going to look at the traffic logs, not the CrowdSec logs. And so if we're inside of CrowdSec and we see traffic logs, that means everything up to this point is working. So we're gonna run docker exec dash it, then crowdsec, then slash bin slash sh. So this is saying, hey docker, exec in and use interactive mode into the container called crowdsec, and then use slash bin slash sh when we get there. So now we're inside of that crowdsec container. And to check those logs, we should be able to go to slash var slash log slash traffic, we see it, go in here, do an LS, and we see our access log and our traffic log. So if you can do that, you're in a good spot. If not, go back and check to make sure your volume and your name volumes are all set right. So this is a really good sign. So we can close out of here and we can move forward. 
So now that it's running and it has access to the logs, we need to install some parsers, some collections, and some scenarios. So a parser is just that. It's a configuration file that describes how a string should be parsed in the log. Pretty straightforward. And you can see here in their diagram, an event comes in, there's a filter of the programs should be SSHD. It's gonna filter match, yes or no. Try the next parser, filter match, yes or no. And then whether or not it was successful. So that's the only job of the parser. Next are scenarios. And this is kind of the brains of CrowdSec. This is where a lot of the logic exists. Now we don't have to figure this out. They figured out a lot of this for us, but it's there to detect behaviors or specific types of patterns that attackers use to gain access to things. And you can see in this chart, an event comes in, there's a filter. Yes, did the filter match? Then they're gonna group by source IP and see if they can find that user, see if the value is already in a bucket and then keep collecting information about that IP of things in that bucket until it overflows. Once it overflows, it's going to send an alert to the API to do something. And even though this might be kind of confusing, this is pretty high level compared to the code that it's running. And there are scenarios for everything. And then after that overflow scenario, then you can take action on it with a bouncer. So a bouncer is the one that actually takes the action. Now, all of this might sound kind of confusing, but they bundled it all together in CrowdSec Hub. They have a bunch of collections here that you can search through with configurations with bouncers. And these are all open source too, and people are contributing to them. Now I'm only mentioning this because if we search, we can find a collection for traffic. And this collection here bundles parsers, scenarios, and overflows all into one, so you don't need to think about it. But it's here, they have a collection for it. And they also have configurations for traffic and then bouncers for traffic, which we're gonna use here in a little bit. So now that we know all of that, we actually need to install a collection. The way that we do that is through the CS CLI, that's the CrowdSec CLI. But this CrowdSec CLI is within the container of CrowdSec, so we do it like this. So we say docker exec CrowdSec CS CLI collections install CrowdSec slash traffic. So again, this is going to exec into the CrowdSec container and execute this command right here. So let's run that. And there we go, we installed this now into that container, but there's an easier way to do this and it's just defining it within the YAML file. So let's edit our Docker file. Let's add another environment variable here. And this environment variable is collections, crowd security slash Linux slash crowd security slash traffic. And these are two collections, one general one for Linux and one specifically for traffic. So let's save that, close out here. So we ran that command earlier, but we really didn't need to since we defined it in Docker now. I highly recommend putting it in Docker rather than running that command, but I just wanted you to see how you can do it. So before I forget, let's actually recreate that container. So we get the new environment variable and spin it up and we're good. And if we go Docker logs, CrowdSec, yeah, we're doing good. So let's clear. Next, we'll need to keep these definitions up to date. And we can do that by running Docker exec CrowdSec CS CLI hub dash update. And then we'll run the command to upgrade very similar to apt, but docker exec crowdsec cscli hub upgrade. This will upgrade all of our packages. And this is something you'll have to do on a schedule, which is kind of a pain. I wish they had an auto update feature. We can automate this with crontab. So in crontab, I have this actually scheduled to run every hour on the hour. I don't know if that's too much or too little or not enough, but it's better than never doing it. So this runs every hour on the hour. And yes, I had to Google how to set this cron up because I have no idea how to use cron and I have to go out to Google every single time. Don't get me wrong, it makes sense after you see it, but I can never guess from the beginning. Anyways, but this is just running those two commands here. The one to update the hub and the one to upgrade the hub. So we should be good there. And if you want, you could throw that in a script and then execute this script from cron. There are many ways to do it, but I'm just gonna do it like this. Okay, so that takes care of updates. So now that CrowdSec can read our logs, we have definitions for collections on how to identify and parse. We've also updated our definitions over time. We're still not taking any actions on it. So we kind of have the IDS piece, the detection, but we don't have the prevention or the actual action. And that's where bouncers come in. So bouncers are a standalone piece of software that act on an event against someone who's doing something wrong or defined as wrong, or something, maybe not even wrong, 
detected as wrong, I guess is the best phrase. So if we look in here, we can see that traffic actually has a bouncer too. And if we view it on GitHub, it's, it's right here. We should definitely start this, start, start this repo, help them out. It's pretty awesome that someone set this up, but this bouncer will need to spin up in a container so that we can actually tell it what to do. In order to add that bouncer, it's yet another container. So this container we can actually spin up along with our CrowdSec stack. So let's modify the Docker Compose for CrowdSec. And in here, we'll need to add one more service. So let's make some room for them. So we're gonna create a service called Bouncer Traffic within that Docker file. I know, name's real original, but that's the one we saw on GitHub. We're gonna specify the image as, I'm terrible with names, especially like this, but football, <laughs> I'm not even gonna attempt. Oh, I gotta attempt, I gotta try it once. F Bonelair. <laughs> F Bonelair, this is getting weird. Uh, F Bonelair, sorry, if this is your container, I can't pronounce your name, I apologize. But anyways, the image name is traffic, crowdsec, bouncer, and latest. You wanna pin that, we're gonna use latest for this installation, but you'll probably wanna pin that. And then we're gonna name it just bouncer traffic and then we're gonna set some environment variables. So this supports two environment variables. The first one is an API key. I'll talk about how to get that here in a second. And the next is the CrowdSec agent host. And so the CrowdSec agent host I set is CrowdSec net 8080. So this means we're gonna communicate with the CrowdSec service over port 8080. Then we're gonna define the network as proxy. So this should be the same network as traffic in CrowdSec. And then we're gonna say depends on CrowdSec. So this is saying, hey, don't start until this service, CrowdSec, is fully started. And then restart and let's stop. That's something that I do to basically say, hey, restart yourself unless I have stopped it myself. A lot of myself there. Anyway, so the one thing we're missing here is our API key. So we need an API key from CrowdSec. So to get our API key, we'll need to run yet another CSCLI command via Docker. And this is bouncers add bouncer-traffic. That's the bouncer that we're creating. And before you do this, it's going to show you an API key and it will not show you it again. So put it somewhere, somewhere safe, because you won't be able to get it again unless you regenerate this container of CrowdSec and start all over. Well, not start all over, but delete your data. So once you run this, it'll create this bouncer and give you an API key. Take that API key and save it. And then you'll wanna plug that API key into here. Now, if you're using ENVs or environment variables or secrets or however you wanna manage it, you'll put it in there and then reference it here, or you just paste the API key here. So once you have that, you'll wanna update your Docker Compose file and then recreate it. And there we go. It should have created the bouncer traffic container now. Okay, so now you have a bouncer that can take action based on logs. But that action is to actually block traffic to it. So we need to use some middleware from traffic to actually do this. And we use forward auth middleware with traffic. So the way this works is as a request will come in, it will forward the request to the middleware. If they're blocked, it will send a 403 page. And if they're allowed to go through, they can proceed. So we'll just need to go back into our traffic configuration, add a middleware, and then reference that middleware in our routes. So we'll go into where we store our traffic config. For me, that's in data. Then we'll modify our config.yaml. You'll wanna find your middleware section in here. And as you can see here, I have some middlewares for PyHole, some redirects, and some default headers I add, and then secured and default whitelist. But we'll want to add another middleware for CrowdSec. And this is actually for the bouncer. So I'm gonna add a middleware called CrowdSec-Bouncer. It's going to use forward auth and the address is HTTP bouncer dash traffic 8080 slash API slash V1 slash forward auth and trust forward header true. And so this middleware is there so we can send traffic to this bouncer if needed. And then we can use this middleware else within traffic. So once you've updated that, let's save it. And then we'll modify our traffic config. And in here, there's very little we need to do except for add middleware. And so we're gonna apply this middleware here that we just created, crowdsec-bouncer, to all of our entry points and for both HTTP and HTTPS. And it's as simple as adding these three lines right here. Now yours might look like this. So you'll just wanna add HTTP middlewares crowdsec-bouncer at file and the same thing under HTTPS. Okay, 
the moment of truth. Does it all work? So now we'll want to actually recreate or restart our traffic container, bring it up, and it seems like traffic is up and running. So if we do Docker logs traffic, this looks good to me. Now we'll want to check our site to make sure we can still get there and we can still get to our site. Okay. So everything's working and everything's in place. Great. Congratulations. You have CrowdSec now protecting your traffic instance, but how do we know if it's actually working? It's a couple simple commands. Let's try that out. So the command to add an IP to the decisions list is docker exec crowdsec cs cli decisions add IP, which is my own IP of 192.168.0.150. And if we add this IP address, we've now added ourselves to that decision list. And let's query this decision list now. So this is the ban list. We see that, hey, this IP address is banned right here, 192.168.0.150. So the decision list is right. Now let's go out to our website. If we go out to our website and we refresh, we see that we're forbidden. So this is working. This means now that this IP address that I'm on cannot access any container that's going through traffic, which essentially blocked me. So I can try other containers or other services that are running. Try another site, blocked. Try another site, blocked. Another site, blocked. So everything now is blocked. And that's really awesome until we need to get back in. <laughs> so now let's actually delete that decision by running docker exec crowdsec cscli decisions delete and delete our IP address. Now we deleted that decision. We can look at our list and see we're off the list. And then if we refresh, we can get back to our site. So that's super awesome. So congratulations. We have crowdsec now protecting traffic. And any bad actor now on that IP list from CrowdSec can no longer get to our services. And if we discover new bad actors, we can then submit them to CrowdSec and protect others now from getting attacked. As I mentioned before, CrowdSec is pretty observable too. They do supply a dashboard, but it's pretty bare bones. No offense, but it's a work in progress. And now they offer a cloud hosted dashboard too that I actually signed up for and authorized my instance of CrowdSec against so I could see it. Again, that's in beta too, so it's pretty bare bones, but you could use either of those. And I'll have documentation on my site on how to spin those up. And you can also set up alerting too. They support alerting to many different notification systems, email, Slack. They don't support Discord yet, but maybe in the future. And I'll also include that on my documentation site as well, because this video is getting pretty long. <laughs> and if you're looking for ways to protect other services, I highly encourage you to check out Learn Linux TV. Jay just started a series recently on protecting all kinds of things with CrowdSec, and it's super interesting, so check them out. So what do you think of CrowdSec? What do you think of this new SecOps service that has crowdsource IP information of bad actors? Are you going to use it or still use fail to ban? Let me know in the comments section below. And remember, if you found microphones in the way, <clears throat> try that again. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. First time chat from Jungle Funkle. Uh, I started building a new home lab server. Instead of proceeding down the route of rack servers like I did in the past, I'm using consumer hardware. In case I ever decide to put it away for a while, I still have a sweet extra gaming machines. Yeah, yeah, that's my that's my level two. That's my level two hypervisor. I have the staged approach where I talked about it before. First is local virtualization on your own machine with VirtualBox, so do it via software on your own machine. That's what I was talking about earlier. Number two is usually a hand-me-down PC or a PC that you have or a PC that you build, basically upgrading your existing PC and turning that one into a home lab machine. I always recommend that next, even on consumer grade, uh, because you, there, there are so many benefits to it. One, if, if you're gonna do the upgrade swap, you get a brand new machine that you're working on, which who doesn't want that? <laughs> And then two, you get a home lab PC out of it too. So I, I totally agree. Uh, this is this is why why I recommend this one quite a bit too. If you don't want to go down the rack mount uh, option.